So, you know, when you do a, when you record a video on a camera and it goes onto a flash drive, it's, it's recorded and then you upload it. Um, that's recorded and then when it gets to YouTube then and people watch it, it's streamed down. So, what, well, let's just read what this says here. It's content sent in compressed form over the internet and displayed by, by the viewer in real time. There's no waiting to download a file to play it. Instead, the media is sent in a continuous stream of data and played as it arrives. So if, you know, if you're familiar with Netflix, um, when you watch a movie, not the, not the DVD, but the, the, the uh, online version from Netflix, that is streamed. It doesn't download the whole movie and then you start watching it. It's downloading it continuously as you're watching it. So that's Sometimes what streaming Sometimes it has to buffer to catch yeah, up. Yeah, right, yeah. right, <laughs> exactly. Um, and then live streaming video is broadcasting real-time live footage or video feed to an audience, accessing the video stream over the internet. So you got a difference. They're still both streaming, though. Okay. So and this, popularity of streaming video. ABC, this is just some headlines that are pulled off the internet. Uh, ABC News releases a new homepage that, and, uh, and apps that prioritize live video. <coughs> Facebook squares off against Twitter, Snapchat, and sports live streaming. Twitter does live stream both national conventions and then Facebook, Twitter add video features as streaming racing. So, so this is a really, really big deal, this video online. And now you can watch... TV, uh, you know, if you have a charter cable subscription, you can go on your smartphone and watch a lot of the TV shows right on your phone through the internet. You just have to log in with your charter login. Otherwise, they won't allow it. But so that's kind of interesting. I actually do that. I know um, uh, some of the TV stations will have uh, a spot on their website where you can watch the shows that are live instead of watching them on your, t on your TV. So if I'm sitting on the deck, sometimes I'll just look at, look at stuff on my smartphone because I don't have a TV out there. So um, it, it's just really amazing what, what, uh, what you can do and how much is happening with video. Uh, and I always think, you know, well, it, in 2005, YouTube started by three or four guys started it. And a year later, they sold it to Google. They sold YouTube to Google for one and $1.65 billion in one year. So in 2006, then, is when Google got it. And that's 10 years ago. So in a way, I was thinking about this, in a way you would think that... Well, video's old news, it's been around, online video's been around for 10 years, right? But I think what's happened is the technology is just catching up. Because back in 2006, it was more cumbersome to watch videos because your computers were slower, your internet connection was slower. Uh, it was like the idea and the software was ahead of the hardware to keep up with all transferring all this data. And now I think we're getting so fast and it's getting to be so usable now because it works so much better. So video is really taking off, even though it's YouTube's been there 10 years. Uh, just some more stats. Uh, 20, by 2017, video will account for 69% of all consumer internet traffic. So a lot of people are paying attention to video. Um, it's the future of content marketing and naturally engaging. It offers content that's easy to digest. If you wanted to learn something, would you rather read a, like a, a long 10-page article or just watch a 10-minute video of someone explaining it? You know, I think I'd rather watch a video. It's just kind of easier. Um, so a lot quicker learning. Yeah, it, it, it's more than, and it's more engaging. You're listening to someone looking at them on yeah. on the screen, right? Whatever. So, uh, and then Axon Research found seven to ten people view brands in a more positive light after watching interesting video content from them. And I think a lot of website businesses are putting videos right on their homepage on their websites. 
because it's just better. Production costs have fallen, so it's easier to do video, it's cheaper. We're actually, we are, I'm having Alan record this today on a camcorder, so we're recording video. Just in case I say something smart, I want to catch it. So. <laughs> but, you know, we might use pieces of this for, I might use pieces of this on my website for promoting things that I do. So, then people can see that I, you know, if you're teaching something, it makes it look like you know something, I guess. So. <laughs> uh, the average internet user spends 88% more time on a website with video than without. So if you want more traffic to your Websites, you know, think about having video. I know Christina does videos really well with her stuff too, so I've worked with I her. Do so. really well, right? <laughs> you do great. Yeah, you do great. And you know, the thing is, some people are afraid to be on video, and some, it, it, in some ways, it's kind of hard. It's easier if you just talk without a script. I've tried it before to say the exact words that I want to say, and it's like it's impossible. I don't know how actors can act. You know. They, but if you just get on there and kind of be yourself, and, and Christina does a great job of that. And, and, uh, yeah, and I think the videos are great on, that she does. And she, she does them on Facebook too, right? You mm -hmm. do them on Facebook and put them there. And in fact, mo probably mostly what, what you do there right. on Facebook. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. But that's very helpful for people who are interested. You know? <laughs> so cool. Are you for you? Christina and Yeah. With Norwex, and she's got all these great products, and she explains how they work, and it's yeah. like, Wow, you know, they yeah. were, and I've been Very to smart. one of her, you do, um, <laughs> you do, what do you call shows, or, oh, well, like Facebook parties, like that? Well, no, I, but I mean the in-person oh, group get yeah. together, what do you call those? The Nor home Norwich parties. parties. Yeah, home parties. Yeah. Home parties or whatever. Yeah. And at those, you explain what products do and stuff, mm -hmm. and then she also does, and that's, that's really good, I mean, that really teaches people well, so why not get that on video, which is what she's doing, and explain it to more people. So. I also get, excuse me, I, I get emails from her. I haven't had a party in about 10 years. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> well, you know, sorry, but yeah, it's like, oh, I know that name. Yeah. But yeah, I get emails. So, so she's reminding you about yes. keeping so in touch with you, so that's good. Yeah. And by the way, that's the best way to keep in touch with that's how all the internet marketers do it. I'll be talking that, and that gets into kind of what they call remarketing and retargeting, finding people who have been in touch with you before and keeping in touch. And email marketing is a huge, huge thing. So, 64% uh, of consumers are more likely to buy a product after watching a video about it. So, interesting. And only 24% of brands are using online video to market to consumers. So it's kind of new. If you do this, start doing this now, you're not going to have as much competition as when everybody starts doing it, right? So, so producing recorded or live video. So live video, we were talking about that, is uploaded as it's recorded. So when you do a Facebook Live, it's being uploaded. And it's being seen as you're recording it. And then when you're done, you just say, I'm done. And then you don't have to upload anything. It's already uploaded. So that's kind of neat. But if you do a video like we're doing now with this camcorder, um, you know, we have to take the card, go home, upload it somewhere. I could upload it to Facebook. I could upload it to YouTube or somewhere else, you know. But with the live stuff, it's already done. So the, the dis disadvantage might be you can't edit it. Yeah, because once, yeah, I don't know that you can up edit a live video. There, they maybe have something with that. But right, uh, you know, once it's up there, it's there, and then you know, it's there right away. <laughs> Jim, yeah. is the is is the Facebook Live recorded? Because I've seen a few of those that people have started to use, and then it, so it'll say they are live. Yeah. But if you're not, if you don't see it right away, then it doesn't seem to play. Does it automatically upload or? It is being uploaded as you're doing it. I've done it. And then after a few minutes, you know, it'll say Jeff was live on Facebook. And then you can replay it. And then you can just tap it and watch it again. I guess I haven't gone back and looked. Yeah. There may be an option to not save it. I don't know that. Okay. But I know that. 
you know, the default is probably to just save it. Okay, so I had tried to save a video that's on live, you know, mm -hmm. and I was able to watch it once or twice. Yeah. But then it disappeared. Uh oh. So I don't know if somebody, you know, if they... Did you do it, it from your own profile, or were you on a business page doing it from there? No. You are no, just in just, Facebook? Yeah, I was on Facebook. A friend of mine did, you know, a <coughs> session, okay. and I had saved it. Yeah. And then, well, I don't know if they, does it just run for a little while and then it... Uh, then not, I've never years. heard that. I It should stay. However, I know it's kind of hard to find things on Facebook sometimes. Right, if you go on somebody's page and you're looking, you know, I was looking it for that large. particular. Now another thing, I, I think one of the people said the S word. So they were, they were concerned about... Oh. Maybe having it got, them, you know, catch that and then take that's it off. Possible. That's possible. That's yeah. possible that they remove it because of they the they have the right to remove it. If yeah, you, you could do stuff the like that. Yes, word. <laughs> yes. Yeah. And then sometimes <laughs> stuff will get removed and it shouldn't be, you know, because right. it's misinterpreted. But. Right, yeah. So, yeah. Yeah, so it's it's kind of fun. You all you all should try it though because it's really cool. I, I when it first started, it, it was first available not only maybe five six months ago, and uh, so I tried it, and then I ran into a couple friends, and people that said, "Hey, I saw you on Facebook," and they're like laughing and smiling. Oh, that was so cool. You know, so it's it it is neat. But I have um, I have a quick question. Yeah. So um, I I could. I could go on YouTube and find a video pertaining to yeah. a product or whatever, right. and I, I can put that on my Facebook page? No. Yes, you can put anybody's video, mm -hmm. yeah, you can. So anybody's something that's video. promoting a product that mm -hmm. I have. You can. Okay. You can put that on your Facebook page, because when you upload a video to YouTube, the terms of that are that it's uh, public. people, it's public, people can share it, So and generally people want that. Yeah. If you don't want that, then you give, you know, you don't put it on YouTube. Mm -hmm. Now you can upload a video to YouTube and set it to private or unlisted. So unlisted means that nobody is able to find it, but you have a link to it so you can just share it with, like so just, let's just say it's a family thing, or uh, maybe it's a baptism, you know. And actually I do video for our church, Calvary, and I record the baptisms and I put them on YouTube. but. I put them as unlisted so nobody can see them unless the person want with the link can see it. And then there's private, which means I think that has more permissions on it. Yeah, you got to be. You can just allow certain people to view it. Then mm -hmm. I haven't used that, but the unlisted is really easy and nice to use. So if you don't want other people to see it, but you just want one person to. Um, there's other issues too, and with working with Dennis and his company, we've run into some things with um, not wanting videos to show YouTube on there so that we don't want people to watch a video and then go over to YouTube. So I had to come up with another solution. There's uh, Amazon has this big web services thing where you can store stuff on their servers. And so that's what we're trying now. And we can just put the video there and nothing else is on it. There's no advertising, there's no ads, there's nothing that says YouTube. So, and that seems to be working okay. So, so there's, there are a lot of options. There are also other companies that, uh, we'll talk, well, I guess we'll talk about that in the coming screens here. We'll get going. Yeah, here we go. So, Snapchat, you know, you can do video there. Uh, Paris, let's see. I was just talking about Amazon Web Services. YouTube Live, and then, now YouTube doesn't have anything on the smartphone yet for live video, but they're coming out with this thing called YouTube Connect, I guess. I don't know too much about that, I just read a little bit about that. Periscope you may have heard of, that's live video through Twitter. Twitter owns that now, I guess. Uh, Ustream and Livestream are live video. So you can go to ustream.com on the web and you can see live videos. You can go to YouTube and find live videos too. Um, I think I found a live station one time. This guy was 
he had his camera pointed at the TV at like Fox News or something, and he was broadcasting Fox News live through his through his YouTube channel. <laughs> so you could I don't know if that's legal, but <laughs> he was doing it. So um, Google Hangouts on air. So a Google Hangout, I don't know if you do, that's associated with Google Plus, which is like Google's answer to Facebook, their social network, which isn't didn't really take off, but a Google Hangout, have you heard of that before, anybody? That's when you can, it's kind of like a video call between two people through Google. You can talk to each other. Well, a Google Hangout on air is more like a broadcast where you can, and that actually uses YouTube, so you can have a live video that's going out through YouTube by using a Google Hangout. Um, so there are other platforms, and this isn't the complete list either. Okay, uh, talking about searchability and SEO, um, th this is two screenshots here. That's me there, it's my dad over there. Uh, and he does, he builds lake water filters and sells them. And I built a, this, uh, a few years back, I built a website for him. And we, we started doing some videos and showing how the uh, lake water filters work. Okay, and Notice the views there, 8,000 views. It's, it gets, it's getting pretty good traction. And all of the, almost all of the filters he sold, probably 99% of them, have been through the internet. And he sells them all over the country. Even, even in other countries, he's sold them. Now, he's not making a ton of money on it, but you know he's making something. And in the summertime, he gets orders. Every week, he gets a few orders, three, four, five orders. And it's because people find him on the website, and I think it's largely because of the videos. Because people, when they talk to him, they always say they watch the video. And this screenshot over on the right, I searched up here uh, on the top. I searched for lake water filters on Google, and notice his video, one of his videos comes up on the first page of Google. It's the, these two are ads. This is a, a regular non-ad result, and his is the second regular result. And that's not an advertisement, and that's not paid for. That's free, search engine optimized. And it's the only video that shows on the page, so it's very noticeable. So, I'm sorry. So, if it was a more common item, then that's not necessarily going to be up yeah. on that list. That's true. There's a lot of different things that can right. affect it. Because this is kind of unique. To be it's kind of unique, but it's pretty good to be on the first page. Yeah. Yeah. This and is why he's selling them online, is because people are finding them. And the videos working with the website just helps. And when you go to his website, it's got all his videos are embedded on the website, so you don't have to leave his website to watch me. So, yeah, that's just a, a fun little example. And I have a funny, uh, I have a yeah. silly question maybe, but how do you they get it up on the first, you know, 10, is it, um, it's not alphabetical, it's, you know, uh, yeah. search how, optimization. How, yeah. Yeah. How you if you're, if you're using the ads, you're just paying, you know, but if you're not doing the ads, mm -hmm. it's a long process. You could be on the 10th page and nobody else yeah, right. It's a long, complicated process. There's a lot of variables. You need to have a website that's that's built the right way so that it's so that Google understands what the website's about. Oh. It can't be about all kinds of different stuff because then it just confuses you to the Google's program and then they don't know how to rank it. So there's a lot of different things though. But you notice it says Lake Water Filters right in the heading. This is a heading of the YouTube video. So that's showing there. And I think Google likes to put a video, one or two videos on right really high up in the search page that it feels really matched that search. And that matches because I'm looking for lake water filters there. And that's what that video is about. So so is it so I mean is there is there somebody, is there a little person at Google who decides, <laughs> oh let's put this or, or you said there were parameters that make it yeah. higher. Yeah, it's a very complicated system, and okay. it's being worked on all the time. But is it subjective? I mean, is it somebody's decision, or is it 
More like it, demographics, probably. Yeah, well, that plays the part to where you're located, but like if you're searching for an uh, antique store, it's going to show you know the local antique stores higher than others. But you know if there could be some subjective decisions made about and some tweaks that they do. But what what they want to do is please the person who is they want the person to find what they're looking for. That's how they stay in business because it has to work. So. So that people come back and use it again. Yeah, they don't. Google doesn't want to show you a bunch of non-relevant stuff or garbage. They want to show you stuff that you're looking for right away. Otherwise, you go to Bing or something. Right. So, but it's it is a it, there's a lot of a lot to the SEO. Uh, but having a YouTube channel along with a website can help you a lot. And it's done. That's this is a good example of that. I think. So. So when you do YouTube live streaming, uh, this is kind of what you need to do here. Create from within, create it from within your YouTube channel. Okay, create the video. <laughs> uh, then you have to enable live for your YouTube channel. So when you have a YouTube account, you have something called a channel. It's kind of like your, your channel is your home page. Uh, and then to do a live video, you got to enable live for your channel. You have to do some settings. You have to set up a stream, uh, stream live streaming encoder, and then the live video can either start right away or you can schedule it for later. So it is a little bit of uh, a little bit complicated setting up a live YouTube video from a desktop. Um, it's pretty easy to do a live Facebook video from a phone. That's just a couple taps, and it should be pretty easy once YouTube gets their their app ready. That should be a couple taps easy, like Facebook. But when you're on a desktop, you've got you know you may have the next a camera hooked up to your PC and the sound you know microphone, and so what you usually do then is you have a desktop program that does the it's kind of like a television studio thing for a desktop program. There's one called Wirecast I know of, and there are others. Uh, but So there, it's a little involved, that part of it. So, And this is, yeah, this is coder software. That's that desktop program that you have to have. So, because you have to make all these things work together. So, all right. Um, for sharing and embedding a YouTube video, this is just an example. So, and some of you have probably seen this. If you're on a YouTube video, you, there's a share thing here, and you just copy this, and then you can paste you can paste that into an email to send it to somebody, or you could paste that into Facebook, and it would it would work. Uh, if you want to embed, you click that, and there's the embed thing there, and then you copy this and paste that into your website. So there's more code there, but in this case, remember the video, the person stays on your website and they just watch that video right on your website. So. Uh, and here's just another example of the embed. So we're seeing the whole screen here. And then you have some other options too. You can select the video size. Now with uh, mobile responsive stuff and uh, resizing the video, this doesn't quite matter as much because you can just put that size in and it'll the video just resizes if your website is resizable and mobile friendly. Uh, and then you have some options down here. So show suggested videos when the video finishes, show player controls, which is like on the bottom. You can give that have the option to not give them the ability to stop the video or start it or some of those things. Uh, and then there's a couple other options there. So and looking close, oh yeah, this is just a closer screenshot of those things there, so. Um, but no matter what, we've tried this with Dennis, some of Dennis's stuff. We could not get the YouTube thing to disappear, the YouTube link. YouTube always wants to be advertising if you're using their system, so. That's kind of the trade-off. You have to have, you have to be given YouTube credit, so you can't remove there's either a link on the top of the video or there's one on the bottom. So no matter what settings you, do, you use there. So 
Uh, and then this is just some screenshots about starting a, a YouTube live broadcast. So when you're in your channel, you click there. Oh, you click there to get to your channel. When you're logged into YouTube, now to log into YouTube, you just log in with your Google account. If you have Gmail, you can just go and you're logged in, you can just go to YouTube and click login and it'll just log you in with your already logged in Google account or Gmail account because it's shared for login shared. Um, and then once you're on YouTube, you can go to your channel and then you can go to video manager. It's kind of a roundabout way to get there. And then you can go, once you're in the, under this video manager part, you can click videos and then you see the live streaming thing there. And then you click that. And then you start setting it up. <laughs> you got to go through this encoding software thing, which is that desktop program. You have to match that up with it. And add stream info. This is, this is some of the info and the optional features that you would add when you do a regular YouTube video. Like name of the video and description and some of that stuff. Uh, and some of the permissions. And then finally you can click go live and then you can be live on YouTube. So it's kind of involved. It's easier if you do a Google Hangout on here because then you can just click this grid here and you'll see this stuff and you can go to Hangouts. And then you can go to Google Hangouts on air. And then you can be broadcasting. You don't have to worry about the rest of the stuff. Uh, and it will take like your webcam that you have hooked up to your desktop and your microphone and then you're, you're ready to go. So it's a lot easier to do a Hangout on air. Then they both broadcast through YouTube. So Hangouts is easier to set up. You don't need the other software. And it allows screen sharing like a webinar. You know what a webinar is where they usually show the screen and then they're talking about what's on the screen. Only 10 people can join a Hangout, but you could have a YouTube video of that live Hangout broadcasting. So there's really, it's unlimited. It's, the limit is 10 people can talk with you and interact with you. So. Facebook Live, it's easy to use on the smartphone app. It can be used on desktop PCs. It's popular. Uh, and here's how you do it from a desktop. Um, if you go to Publishing Tools on Facebook, then you will see this thing over here. And you may have to click, I don't know if you have to click that. You may have to click Videos, and then you'll see the Live button. But then you have to go through, uh, let me go back. You still have to go through that extra um, encoding stuff too with your other program and stuff. So it's a little it's it's kind of like YouTube here if you're doing if you're doing Facebook live video. It's kind of the same thing where it's a little more hassle to set that up. Uh, you may not know that you can actually share and embed YouTube or Facebook videos. So if you see a video on Facebook you like and you click that little arrow there you can you can embed it on your own website. From, so Facebook is doing what YouTube does in being like a serve, a video server for people. So can they're competing I, with YouTube. Can you explain again what embedding is? Yeah, so, I'm such a yep, so embedding is, think of it as your video that's on your own website and you see it right on your own website and you can play it right on your okay, website. So it doesn't take you to It doesn't something. take you to YouTube to okay. watch it. Or, or in this case, Facebook. Because okay. if you just shared the link, if you, if you, uh, you probably could share this. I don't actually see a share link, but I think there's a way to share a post. Yeah, just click and copy YouTube video. And if you put that on your website, then you take them off there. You take them to YouTube then. Right. Yeah. And I think the same thing for Facebook. If you just shared the link to this post, it's going to take them over to Facebook. But if you get this embed code, then you can have the vid. It's kind of like taking the video over to your website embedding this. And how do you get the embed code? Well, this is on, for Facebook. You, you click on this little thing up here. Mm -hmm. And then you click embed. 
and then it'll open up a little box where you copy the code. And then you go over to your own website and you have to paste it into the page where you're at. So now if you have a WordPress website, that's a little easier to do. If you don't, then it's a little different. It depends on what kind of website you have. So when we're ready, we'll call you. Just call me. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I'll help you out. All right. So video is important, don't you think? Yeah. Does anybody think it's not? It's just a passing fad, right? <laughs> Yeah, it is. It's it's fun. You know, I've been I've been recording video since I was a kid, since the 70s. I mean, I was doing video with uh, eight millimeter cameras, and of course that you get about two minutes on a real film, and then you have to mail it in and <laughs> spend money to get it sent back to you. And uh, it's it's a lot easier these days. So, and even back to when we had video cassettes and stuff. At least you can watch it right away, but still you got all this tape and stuff. So, uh, just some more, I guess I just have a list of some more things of why it's important. Um, branded video will become the lifeblood of the mod. I just pulled that off the internet. So, I think, you know, internet marketing is really going to be taking advantage of video. Um, we talked about SEO advantages, how people go to Google, they find video, if you have videos, they find you better. Uh, it creates a stronger connection between your company and potential clients, you know, because don't they say the best way to interact with potential customers and to do sales is face-to-face, -face, right? So what's the next best thing? <coughs> right. Got to be video, right? Yeah. So. And I was looking at this, picture's worth a thousand words, and then I read one article that said, well, if you have a thousand seconds in a video, a thousand times a thousand is a million, so a video's worth a million words. Yeah. Right? I mean, kind of. I, I don't think know. you're right. Yeah. So it's, it's a valuable thing. The so. thing that everybody can identify that's interesting is that everyone used to have their phone book next to their telephone, of which both have disappeared. Yeah. Right. And now, yeah, things are changing. now your smartphone is what you use. A lot of people don't even have a, a yeah. phone, phone in their house anymore. Right. Right. But so their phone is their their directory and their yeah. communication. Yeah. Yeah. And speaking of smartphones, um, the the cameras are getting so good that you know you can, you can get pretty good pictures and video with just with just the cameras. Now, Stacy is a photographer, so I'm sure they're you know they, they're not they're still not as good in some ways as the SLR cameras because you have the big lenses. And you know I know if I'm trying to take pictures with my phone in a dark room or something, you're not gonna you're not gonna be able to beat what you can do with the, the SLRs. And plus, you're not gonna be taking wedding pictures with your smartphone for professional wedding pictures. You know, so you're not gonna replace the photographer. You just aren't gonna do that. But still, you can get some pretty darn good pictures and really pretty, pretty good videos as well. So, um, just a little more on this. Recording video is pretty easy. You upload it to YouTube, embed on the website. Uh, upload to Facebook as an ad. You can do a video with your phone and then up and make it into an advertisement on Facebook. Um, and that's like the best way you can do an ad probably on Facebook because Facebook really pushes videos farther than other kinds of ads. So you get the most bang for your buck if you use a video for ads. Uh, we went over these already. Some of the other competitors to YouTube, Wistia, Vimeo, Instagram, Snapchat. Um, and then we did talk about this. If you need a video without ads, you can turn ads off on your own channel. But you still have, you know, if you're using YouTube, you still have, like we said, you still have those YouTube links on there. So, so if you want to get rid of those, you can host on Amazon and, and embed those on your WordPress website. And that's exactly what we've done with Dennis's company. So they do drone video, which is really cool too. So they have this drone that flies up and takes videos of what you did, arrow wood. Well, yeah. and, 
get yeah. from the lake uh, yeah. than we did uh, during the, the wood boat show. So you've got the wood boats there, and it's Arrowwood. So I showed it to the manager, and he said, yeah, we need to have this yeah. over there. So they want to put it on their website, yeah. the video. Right. So, yeah. yeah. So, yeah, the video is it's really great. So, all right. And then a little more about setting up YouTube Live. Oh, this is just kind of going through all the things you need to go through. Uh, and Facebook Live, it, you know, it's a lot of work, right? <laughs> kind of, there is some parts in there where you have to set up that encoder software that it gets to be a little bit confusing. So I happen to have a step-by-step -step training course using online video that shows you how to set up everything and get started with live streaming video. And this is the part where I do my selling. I have a little thing here where I sell this course and it's, it has easy step-by-step -step instructions for both Facebook video and YouTube. Talks about which software to use, which cameras and microphones to use, and we go over some other options for video platforms. And I'm selling it for $159, but today, seminar special, $49. And I'm not actually done with this yet, I'm still working on it, so if anyone is interested in this, this will be like a video, several videos of on-screen instruction tutorial type stuff. So, and there is an order form, the bottom sheet here, that has that there. So if you're interested, no pressure, but um, that's one of the things that I'm doing in my business is I'm trying to do some training and this seminar kind of ties into that, and I'm planning on also doing online webinars that would be similar to the live seminar. So, uh, so I'll be using a lot of this these video features that I'm talking about here. So, um, and that is the last screen. So, of these three platforms that you mentioned, do you prefer one over the other? Uh, which three? You mean? Uh, YouTube, Google, YouTube, Facebook. I mean, to go live. Yeah. Well, I. To go live is one easier than well to go thing? live. Facebook's really really easy. Okay. Um, the, the smartphone way is the easiest way. And when YouTube comes out with their YouTube Connect or whatever they call it, I'm sure that'll be just as easy as a Facebook one. Um, Facebook right now is the easiest. But if you want to, you know, use better cameras and if you want to do it from your desktop machine, then uh, it's. There's, I think Facebook and YouTube are similar in the setup because you have to work with your encoding software, your little television studio software to get that going. So, yeah. So, what else? Uh, any thoughts about video and with your own businesses or how you might use it or are you, are you excited about trying this more? <clears throat> I just uh, my thought is that uh, you know from watching looking at your uh, statistics you had I thought it was really interesting that 64% um, are likely to buy after watching a video and only 2% of businesses are doing it and thinking what a huge marketing opportunity is and whenever I go to resorts like I was up north on uh, uh, the Surfside uh, resort they're staying there in uh, part of the Bluefin Bay chain and uh, they're interested in having, the, I was just out there with my uh, drone catching my niece's wedding and coming in from the lake you know doing the overhead down into the, the place where the wedding took place and then taking the wedding pictures like you might you know and, and just kind of do snippets of different things and make it a two minute video and uh, the the people there are interested in that, you know, because they, nobody does this, so yeah. if you do it, <laughs> yeah, I mean, it's like, it's a, somebody is always saying, oh, we wanted to do that, uh, the, yeah. the owner of a resort, or, yeah, yeah. right, yeah, yeah it's, it's so new, especially with the drone stuff, but then yeah. that coinciding with all you can do online, and right. people being more aware of video in general because of various reasons. The technology is faster and it's, it works better and plus you got Facebook. Facebook Live is really kind of bringing it up too, you know. Mm -hmm. This live streaming thing is really taking off. So, I wonder if you could do live streaming from your drones. Well, yeah, it has that option, I noticed, but yeah. I'm not 
taken the time yet to figure out how to do that. Yeah. So if you had an event like, uh, you know, just thinking of downtown Birchett's in Alexandria, if they had the, the, the dance on the street, yeah. live streaming to, right. you know, somewhere where people, you know, can find local events, maybe yeah. that uh, in a small way might be something. Yeah. Or the, you know, Art in the Park or anything that we do here in Alec or Airwood yeah. Fireworks. Lots it's of the like events. Fire, Airwood Fireworks at night, mm -hmm. you know, that could be. Yeah, you get really close. Yeah, mm -hmm. not too close. <laughs> right. <laughs> <laughs> Well, I was just kind of curious, do you think you should have a website and a YouTube channel, or both, like both, but then embed those videos on your website? Yeah. Then, is what you're saying? Definitely. Okay. Yes. What if you just chose one? You could do one. I mean... You it's... could do just a YouTube channel, but um, the SEO power that you have is enhanced if you also have a website. Because they kind of help each other. Mm -hmm. sure. And plus you can write more stuff on your website. Right. And that helps. Also, if someone is looking at your stuff on YouTube, they're seeing a, your competitors on there too. Sure. But if they're on your website, they're only seeing your, your stuff. Even when you have your own channel. No. Yeah, well, yeah. Yeah, because others pop up after. Yeah, because they're on YouTube. There's their videos all over the screen. But it is free for YouTube, mm -hmm. but then the website you would, it would be a charge. Yeah, just web hosting fee, like, you know, we have with, okay. you know. I know, I have both. And I have yeah, <laughs> yeah. I need to get on the ball, but yeah. It's, but it's, it's a way to keep, you know, if you want people coming, you want people coming to your website so that the folks on you and not seeing everything else. Because it's distracting on YouTube, right? I mean. There's all kinds of stuff that they might see out there that are fun stuff, unrelated stuff sure. that they'll go to and they'll forget all about you. you know? all right, yeah. So, yeah, the same with Facebook. Yeah. But, so, what else? Anything else? I'm actually surprised that more, I haven't seen more people do Facebook Live, but I think it's kind of a camera shy thing. It's like, I don't know, I don't know if I want to, I mean, just just doing a video is enough, but live, I mean, that's that's even more, you know, so. But maybe people will eventually get used to it. So. Okay, well, I talked for 50 minutes here, so. We want to take a break and have something to eat. We're scheduled. I think I don't think we schedule the next one until 9:30, right? Mm -hmm. I think that's right. So then we do have a little bit of a break, so we can still talk about stuff here. And I was just thinking of how I could use this in my store. And, yeah. Um, just exactly. just a good example of the hook that the video. We were, a couple of years ago, we were walking through the airport and I saw, you know, in the Minneapolis St. Paul Airport, they have this big, or they have them all over, they have, you know, screens. Yeah, right. And they, they had this, um, it was like a Hobie, uh, it's called a Hobie Mirage, but it's a kayak that has pedals, and the, you know, the pedals kind of do the little, I don't know, this thing. But anyway, I stopped in my track and I watched it, and uh, I went home and found out who sold them. And we bought one oh, the next really? day. <laughs> wow. But I was just thinking, you know, even like in, in my store, I have a children's store, and there's we have probably 10 items that carry 80% of our, you know. And I was just thinking, even having those like on a, we, you know, I'm sure we have an old flat, I mean, we, we combine two households into one, so we have way too much of everything. But even just running a, if I could do like a YouTube yeah. to a, a TV, just even in my store, yeah. to tell people about, I mean, because we have some items that people specifically come in for. Mm -hmm. you know, it's like, I know you saw this. That would be a fun thing to do, and I think you can set a, a video to repeat. Uh, and you also could do a slideshow yeah. and make it into a video. Yeah, because I'm a camera shot, I do not want to be, mm -hmm. I don't, this, being on Facebook Live—that's intimidating. It's like. Well, such. you could you could record someone else with your phone. 
instead of pointing it at yourself, you could you could yeah. ask somebody questions. Or yeah, yeah. Or in your story, you could do a little walkthrough and show some of the items you have to say. Yeah. You know? Yeah. Yeah. No, what Christina does is demonstrate some of the products, you know, washing the window with the, the well, product maybe or something. Well, Christina could come to my store. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. It gets to be kind of fun, actually. But, you know, it's really what, if you're a store, a retail store, you need to get, if people don't come in, they don't know what's in right. there, right? Right, So right. if you can get video. So that's why I was oh. thinking of doing the YouTube to my website. I like yeah. that idea. Because, yeah. I mean. Absolutely. I know that you can, because that's how I've gotten myself educated on yep. some products and I've gone to YouTube. Right, to yeah. the education. And if it's on your website, that's good. But if you don't have very many people on your website, then think about, well, maybe I should put it on Facebook, too. Because yeah. there's a lot of people there. Yeah, I, no, I was thinking from YouTube to Facebook. Because I have, I have oh, a lot. Oh, yeah, okay. Not that I have a lot of followers, but you know, it's, it's growing. Yeah, exactly. And then if you're not still not reaching enough people on Facebook, you can do some paid ads on Facebook to promote it, boost it. Mm -hmm. And then a lot of people will see it. You can throw ten dollars in and reach a couple thousand people. I know. Yeah, it is. It's pretty so, cheap to reach a couple thousand people. Mm -hmm. Yeah, we're gonna be talking about that in the, the Facebook session a little bit later. So yeah. But yeah, it's it's an exciting time to be working with this stuff. It's really fun because, I mean, you can do what years ago you had to have really expensive equipment and now you can get the same result with, you know, pretty cheap equipment, so. I've seen online somewhere the little, um, it's kind of like, a, almost like a camera that you attach to your phone to get better quality. Is that, have you heard anything about that or seen mm, anything about that? They have that? lenses for zooming in and okay. doing different That's things, but. Yeah. It's not another camera, just right. It's just something that, that you would attach yeah. to your. That you can do more of a zoom in feature on your okay. camera that way. So many gadgets. Yeah. Oh, I know, incredible. Can somebody explain the drone? What What is a drone exactly? Hmm. Uh, you know, they're they're called UAV unmanned aerial uh, vehicle. And the military started out with those, so a drone is typically thought of as yeah, the ones we have, which can go all the way up to a several thousand pound machine that the military uses. But the one, the technology, just like microwaves were developed from uh, our travel to the moon, you know, and all these things came out of the military, and so as drones now, the technology that we have, the ones we have are about this big, and uh, we. Uh, the one that, uh, the latest one we caught, uh, that we bought, is called a uh, Phantom 4. And <clears throat> I've been at it since we had a Phantom 1, but they keep advancing them. Now this last one that they've come out with, the Phantom 4, is uh, it, it has sensors so I could fly it straight at the wall and it'll stop and won't run into the wall. And I, in fact, uh, put a YouTube video up when I was filming a real estate listing, and that's what we do with these drones. We do the enhancement by coming down from the lake. It's usually more high-end properties that we come in from the lake, and then go inside with another camera technology with gimbal, gimbals on it, and it looks like it's a continuation of the drone flying into the, into the building. But the drone is uh, going to enhance a lot of things, because when you watch any movie on TV or any advertisement, you'll realize when you start realizing the, the, the drone and what it does is they start always by showing a car from the air. Or, uh, you know, scenes in movies are always coming from above. So uh, video enhancement uh, almost always in the way of outside advertising can start with a drone and make it a lot more exciting. And they have 4K cameras on them too, like we've been talking. They look like little helicopters, with, but they're, they've got like four or five four. propellers? Four propellers? Four to, four to more. I mean, oh, okay. Yeah. Yeah. The high end look like a helicopter. Yeah. Yeah, That's pretty. what I thought it was, but I yeah. realized it's just to kind of, you know, how popular it is. Well, I mean, you I have to. Going what's to the, be, yeah. the licensing requirements on that too? Is, Changing, right? Yeah, we have uh, what's called a 333 exemption. I'm a pilot, and another partner of mine is a pilot. So we started getting in with the legal 
aspects of uh, using this commercially. You aren't allowed to use this technology commercially unless you have FAA uh, authorization. Uh, they, they control the, the airspace above us legally. And so you have to apply to them. It took us about six months of work trying to go through the paperwork of getting a 333 exemption for this. And we got it. And we found out when we did, there were 7,000 total in the United States of these. So we've had a lot of success at getting people that, like Airwood, they won't have somebody use a drone and video their uh, commercially used um, preparator, or uh, their, their, their video can't be used by a company like that, or they could get sued if it weren't done legally. So if you went to a resort up north or whatever, you, know, you would have to have permission from the owner to say, well, you know, I have this drone, can I use that? Right. You know, it's not right. like you could just yeah, yeah. it anyway. Yeah, I didn't have that. Yeah, we well, probably could though because that's public airspace, isn't it? I mean, no. you don't have to have permission to fly over. A, do you have to have permission to fly over something? No, not necessarily, but under 400 feet you do, and that's the requirement for drones is that they don't uh, allow us to fly above 400 feet. The FAA they they restrict you to 400 feet or below unless you have authorization from that airspace, whoever is controlling it, which we do get and we can. But there isn't much reason to do video above 400 feet. Thank you. Interesting stuff. So, so I'm hoping that all the food that we brought gets eaten up. So please, <laughs> I don't want to take it home. <laughs> Steve brought some of it too. So, and I'm going to get a little coffee. Yeah. <laughs>